everyone and welcome to another of our stories about the resurrection. We are still in the journey to Emmaus with the two disciples and I want to speak a bit today about courage. Courage comes in many forms. It might be your first day at school where you had to really pluck up courage just to get through the gate. Or it might be enduring a, a long bereavement, you've lost your partner and you have to pluck up courage every day just to go on. One of my heroes is my father and as we're around VE Day it's worth just saying a little bit about him because he uh, landed on the Normandy beaches and went all the way to Germany in World War II. And I know in that experience, he had to have a huge amount of courage just to go on. Well, there are many forms of courage, but in our story, there is another form that's really interesting. So the two people are going along the road. We have heard their name, by the way, it's Cleopas and um, his companion. And there's been lots of speculation about who the companion was. Um, it might be his wife, it could be uh, a son or a colleague. Um, and some people said, well, it's meant to be you or me. Luke has written it like that so that we can put ourselves alongside Cleopas on the walk. And so they're walking along and we have to understand that these two disciples are in danger. They are part of a group whose leader has just been executed and whose closest followers are in hiding. And they too were in hiding with them. And now for reasons we don't know, they're walking to Emmaus. Obviously they had something to do there. And so they are part of the gang who are wanted by the authorities. Part of the gang who could be arrested any time, could be executed. So like those other disciples, what you'd expect to happen is for them to lay low, but for some reason they don't. And then on the road, they encounter a stranger. Now, as we've mentioned, we don't know quite who he is. Well, they don't know who he is. We learn in the story only too soon. And he says, what, what are you talking about? And they tell him the whole story of his own death and resurrection, or at least his death, and then the rumour of his resurrection. It's an astonishingly courageous thing to do. Which one of us, having had our hopes dashed and maybe raised a little with a possibility, would then tell a complete stranger, who might tell the authorities, what had been going on, what this man Jesus of Nazareth meant? They tell him the whole story. This has to be the deepest kind of belief and trust in God. It is actually astonishing. And they clearly have a great desire to tell the story. The story was doing the rounds for sure, but clearly they were at the heart of it. And they need to tell. They need to tell someone about what was going on. And he is there. And of course, as they tell, they're telling it to Jesus himself. Jesus is there, part of the story. He is the story, but he's also the listener. And he's also alongside them as they tell. And perhaps we too need courage to tell the story of Jesus. There are certainly Christians around the world for whom it is life threatening to tell about Jesus. We're not in that situation, but it can be embarrassing. It can be difficult. We might risk losing our friends. We might risk looking silly or foolish. Nonetheless, Jesus is there as we tell his story. He asks us to have courage and he gives us that courage by his spirit to share about him. So let's pray. Father, give us the courage now to tell others about Jesus, that they may know his joy as well. Amen.